You gave your boss a, a Space Laureate Award years ago for being the first company to uh, orbit a private satellite. And uh, that was, it's, it's been a while now, so y'all have done a lot more since then. And of course, you've also had some setbacks. I have to ask you, because you are the certifi certification guy there, how the, uh, the pad explosion you know, on September 1st um, is affecting your, your ability to, to certify for human flight with that vehicle. And, and this is a new area too. Bill and, and his colleagues are, are struggling with, with um, declaring your vehicle safe for human spaceflight. And um, I wonder if you could tell us you know, where that is and also the, the, the lessons that you may have learned both from that mishap, the one earlier on the cargo mission, and um, you've been, you're actually kind of an, an old new space guy now or a company, so if you could give us the benefit of some of the experience that you've had over the past decade or so. Sure, sure. So, um, you know, obviously the uh, anomaly that we had on the pad during our static fire test was unfortunate. Um, we are actively investigating it. Um, Hans Koenigsmann is leading that investigation. We uh, have been really good, I think, through our comms team releasing the latest and greatest as that investigation unfolds. We are absolutely letting our uh, uh, customers, including NASA, understand what's going on with that. Um, as far as certification and how it affects that, you know, the day-to-day the -day part of certification isn't very sexy. So it's, it's really, you, you keep your head down, you look at what requirements NASA expects you to meet. NASA's not going to give you a pass on any requirement. Uh, they have a really good, you know, engineering team that's been doing this for years, has a lot of experience. So for the most part, it's very objective. You know what you're going to be judged on. And so it's easy for me to, to look at, you know, SpaceX overall and say, okay, this team is working the anomaly. I still know what I, I need to do in front of me in the next day, in the next month, in the next week. Uh, and it's like the stuff like, you know, standards, like how do you fall on acceptance test things? Um, you know, just, just basic requirements that NASA has on the books that it doesn't affect uh, my day-to-day -day work while they're working on the anomaly. Now, that being said, much like the previous anomaly, we are going to learn from this anomaly, and we are going to improve our vehicle from this anomaly. I think um, SpaceX has been very committed um, in our conversations with NASA to making sure that we fly the safest vehicle ever made for humans, and it's, it's a commitment we take um, seriously. You know, Mike brought up two good points when, when he was speaking. Uh, one had to do with, um, you know, how NASA's assigned a pool of four crew members. Well, that pool of four crew members comes to SpaceX all the time. And we make it a point to have those crew members meet every uh, part of our company. I mean, we will go department by department, get our folks familiar with the crew, because we want, it, um, we want our culture of our company to understand that there are people that are gonna be riding on our rockets and our spacecraft. These are the people that are gonna be riding on our rockets and spacecraft someday. You know, we need to take our job as seriously as we can. We need to make sure we are doing everything because now you've put a face to your, your work. So that was one thing Mike brought up. The other thing he brought up was how cutting edge research um, has shown that you know, intracranial pressure is a problem. Well, that research is so new, in fact, that it came out after the contract was awarded. Hmm. But as soon as they came to us with that, we said, okay, you know, you guys seem concerned about this. What can we do? How can we make our vehicle safer? And we started looking at how can we make our seats safer based on that latest and greatest data from, um, from Mike and, and the medical team. So, you know, we take, we take human spaceflight really seriously and we take anomalies as bad as they are. I mean, if there's any silver lining for, for folks like me that love data, is that anomalies, you know, they give you a lot of good data, and that data can be used to ultimately improve your vehicle safety and reliability. So I think at SpaceX, we really look at it from that uh, perspective. We try to, you know, try to see the positive in, in something that's obviously not ideal. Um, and I think so that was the first part of your question as, as far as uh, lessons learned. Um, and yeah, so I think as far as certification, we're full steam ahead, we're, we're still, um, uh, trying to remain on schedule. Uh, it, I don't think it really is very useful to speculate on schedule because it, it's not going to change what you're going to do in the coming weeks and months. So no. we have our heads down just working to try to get certified as quickly as possible. If I could follow up just a little bit, and this is, this is something new uh, for people like me. We're, we're used to covering the government, which has a, 
a, a mandate to, to be open with information up to a point. And, and we're having to learn how to cover companies like SpaceX because mm -hmm. a lot of times we rely on tweets from Elon Musk to find out what's happened. Yeah. So, <laughs> you, know, I, I, you know, I'll put you on the spot a little bit and I apologize in advance, but is, is anything, is there a particular shape to the findings of this, of this failure review? Is it the, the super dense oxygen? Is it the helium tanks? What, what, what are they looking at, at least? I think in any good uh, root cause investigation, you shouldn't focus immediately on one thing. That's like a huge error. Mm -hmm. So we have experience of, of how to run a fault tree investigation thoroughly, you know, based on an anomaly we had mm -hmm. in flight last year. So we're very much taking the methodical, don't jump to any conclusion, because if you jump to a conclusion, you might miss something, and that something will never be re rediscovered because you automatically cross it off the list. Are you looking at those two areas? The helium tanks and the and the yeah, we're, fuel. Yeah, we're we're looking at everything. We're looking at first stage, second stage, ground, everything. And I think you know, despite the comment about um, Elon's tweets, I think our comms team is super um, proactive in getting out a very detailed statement as soon as we know something mm -hmm. that is conclusive. They put it out right away, and I think that's the uh, way we're going to continue to operate to make sure we communicate with with our customers. Good. Thanks, Abi.